Well, good day, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? I hope you said great. I'm doing great, but today is going to be a sad vlog because today we are in Marietta, Georgia, and today we're going to go visit the grave of a very, very sad story. A murder victim, a six-year-old girl, an unsolved mystery, John Benet Ramsey. Days with Jordan the Lion begins right now. She was actually born here, but I believe at a year old, her father's business caused them to relocate out to Boulder. They had her funeral here on New Year's Eve. Here we are. Kind of an old style cemetery. Not what you would think a six year old would be buried in. For the life of me, I don't know how anybody could ever take the life of a child. So right in the very back of the cemetery, there's one solemn tree over here with no leaves or anything, really no branches even right now. In front is John Bonet's mother, Patty Ramsey, Patsy Ramsey, I mean, Patricia Ramsey. She would go by Patsy. Grace, love, and faithfulness through all. She actually found the ransom note. And behind her is her poor daughter, John Benet Ramsey. They were very close. Um, Patsy was a former beauty queen. She had been former Miss West Virginia. And she had her daughter, John Benet. She was also in pageants from a young age, so that was something she enjoyed doing. She enjoyed performing. There you can see it says, love, purity, and joy, a gift to her family and the world, home and the peace of God. So what happened was, you'll notice on here that it says she passed away on December 25th, 1996. It's not exactly true, it was actually it was actually on December 26th, but her parents decided to have the 25th to kind of remember or to kind of remind people of what evil happened at Christmas time to them and to their daughter on that Christmas night. So what happened basically was that the family was very well to do. They had their own plane and on Christmas they were spending time with friends um, in the area in Boulder and it was like a kind of a dinner gathering and at the end of the night they went home and they were to wake up the next morning and take their private plane via pilot to Michigan to spend the day after Christmas with John Benet's father's uh, first family he had three kids before he was married to Patsy. They were gonna go spend time with them, so. The family woke up early and Patsy said that they always would get up and get everything ready before they woke up the kids, John Benet and her brother. And um, said she got up and was going up the back staircase and found a note on one of the steps. And she said it was very dark, so she went and looked at it in the light, and it was a ransom note asking or demanding $118,000, or they were going to behead her daughter, and uh, warned the family to not. It was actually made out to John Ramsey, Mr. Ramsey, and it said to not contact the FBI or police or anyone or they would take action and that they would be calling between 8 and 10 with further instructions. As you can imagine, any family or any parents would freak out at this and they immediately called 911. They immediately, Patsy called and reported that John Bonet had been taken. There was a ransom letter. And so the police came out and they didn't know what happened. They had ran up into her room. They had looked, she wasn't in bed, so she was gone. The police came over and told the family they should check 
every inch of the house for some sort of clue or evidence or any, anything that looked like it would be out of the ordinary. And when Mr. Ramsey went downstairs, he opened a door in the basement and found John Bonet's body laying down there covered by a blanket. She had had her mouth duct taped, her hands were bound, and um, sadly they found out that there was blood on her underwear even though her clothes were on, so really bizarre. And when the police came, they thought it was bizarre too. They thought the ransom note seemed strange, asking for $118,000, it just seemed like an odd amount. They also said that it, they never really encountered usually a ransom for children, something like this. And, um, and they just seemed a little bit like it didn't make much sense. So they wanted to question John and Patsy down at the police station. And apparently John and Patsy refused. They said they would talk and tell, um, give any answers to any questions at their house, but they, they could already sense that the police just seemed like they were not handling this properly and so they just didn't trust them so they never would go down and do that i'm sure what was going on was that the police wanted to interrogate them in a room with a camera on and you know go through that whole process and they didn't want to do it so they got lawyers individually and once the once the autopsy was done they found that some of the evidence pointed to what they thought could be something done in the home by john and patsy the Ramseys absolutely refuted this, and in fact, one of the things the police did is they they looked through the house and they noticed that there were no doors or windows or anything open that anybody could come in to do anything, except for in the basement there was one window, but they claimed that it wasn't logical because a person couldn't fit through there, and they also said there were cobwebs there. If someone had been through there, there would have been no cobwebs, they would have been disturbed. They eventually, the DA eventually hired an outside investigator and the outside investigator originally started looking at the Ramsey family, but he said the more evidence he found, he believed it wasn't them and would state so. He even filmed a video of himself going through that window showing scuff marks on the wall and they even found a suitcase right under the window that just looked out of place that probably would have been used by somebody as a step. So this became, I mean, this was all over the news. This was all over the tabloids because the Ramseys felt because they were rich, that people were kind of looking at them as though there was something more behind this. And they swore that there wasn't. They wanted to find whoever had perpetrated this. And really nothing was coming about. They they did DNA tests. None of the DNA that was found on John Bonet matched any of the family members. Um, years later, they did a second DNA of the actual long johns that John Bonet was wearing because they figured, you know, somebody had to pull them down and pull them up since they found her that way. And they did find DNA and evidence. And again, it didn't match any of the family members. So the Boulder police, they, they were absolutely convinced, it sounds like, that they thought that the family, even though all of this, they still felt like the family was responsible. So they took it to the grand jury. And over a 13 month investigation, the grand jury, apparently, they didn't, you know, nobody knew until much later, but originally the DA said that, uh, they were not going to pursue charges on John and Pat's, even though John would say they were fully expecting it by the way things were going, even though they were never uh, allowed to testify or anything during this, they suspected that they would. And then it wasn't. But years later, like a decade or more later, an investigator, a reporter, fought to get those records opened up and found out because he had tracked down some of the jurors and some of the jurors said well i voted for them to be indicted and he found several that did so he took it to get the files open to find out what was discovered and yes in fact on two counts accessory and child abuse they did think that john and patsy should be indicted but that the da decided not to pursue it and I know this just sounds like so crazy and so much to take in. You're going, why would the DA? Well, maybe the DA didn't feel that they had any evidence or enough evidence to do anything. 
But the theory that the police were always presenting was that they thought that because John Bonet had not only been choked and tortured, but she also had like, um, oh, like a 12 inch or eight inch laceration on her skull. So they could tell this was not an accidental fall. This was done purposely. And they were trying to say that Patsy had gotten so mad at John Bonet's bedwetting. She, she had a real bedwetting problem apparently that she just snapped. Or they were saying that John Bonet had pineapple in her system and nobody remembered her eating pineapple. The parents didn't remember giving her pineapple, but she had it in there and that the police were theorizing that John Bonet got up, went down and got herself some pineapple and that the parents came down and flipped out and that Patsy did this and was, and John was covering for her. But that just seems so far-fetched to me. I just, like I said, I just can't imagine parents doing anything like this or anyone doing it, really. But years later, you know, Patsy ended up dying 10 years after this. She suffered with cancer and then passed away. And after she passed away, a man came out in Thailand and said that he was the one that did it. And none of his descriptions or facts added up. His DNA didn't match, so they found out that this was just some wacko trying to take credit. And they've had several leads that they thought might possibly be the person, but they've never, ever been able to find anything. I mean, even as recently as like two months ago, I remember hearing they said they've got new developments and new people that they want to talk to. But eventually the family was actually issued an apology by the DA for thinking or potentially believing that they were somehow responsible. I hope whoever did it does pay the price. They, they said that the DNA from the blood on the underwear and on her clothes, because they, they found DNA on the outside of like the waistband and the inside where they would have been pulled up, that all matches the same person. I kind of had a hard time believing that Patsy was involved because when they interviewed their friends and people in Boulder, they would just say like, she was great. They said, you know, they came from Atlanta, so they were used to dressing up and being fancy and having lots of people around, having lots of parties. So they said she was always more dressed up than everybody else, but they said she was always so fun to be around. You couldn't see her without having a smile on your face. She was very welcoming. They said maybe that was even the problem. John would say later, you know, he said, we used to open our doors to people. You know, we just felt like we were Ozzy and Harriet and, you know, we would film things inside the house with our kids. And, you know, John Bonet was in a parade float. So maybe it was just, she was just too out there, out in public for her age. So he always felt guilty about that. He felt that he never, that he didn't properly protect her. That's gotta be a horrible feeling. He is still alive, he did remarry, and is still looking for the killer of his daughter, John Bonet. She was actually named after him. His name is John Bennett Ramsey. Rest in peace. Thank you all for watching. I hope that kind of gave you a summary as to, you know, that whole story. It's such a sad story. And, you know, one thing I forgot to mention, one of the reasons the police also thought that family might be involved is because John and Patsy both used to keep a notepad next to the phone to take notes uh, separate for each one. And hers was missing pages and it looked like a practice note had been written and her painting utensil was used as one of the torture devices so I just don't believe it personally but um, post your comments below as to you know what you think happened or you know will we ever find an answer to this thank you all for watching we'll see you next time have a great night goodbye